So today, Eden Mejia with Diamond Property Group, powered by Collier & Associates, Realtor in Northwest Arkansas. And I've got my good friend, Brian Thornton, who is a loan officer with Flat Branch Mortgage. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm so good. Thank, Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. No. Thank you. <laughs> We've only talked about this for so long. And we are formally coming to you with our podcast. Yay. And I love that you can be our first guest. Me too. I'm so excited and thankful. Yeah. So give everybody a little synopsis of what you do and um, how you serve the community. Okay. So I am a mortgage lender. I work with Flat Branch Home Loans. Um, I have a team. We've been uh, with Flat Branch, just recently moved to Flat Branch about six months ago. Um, Flat Branch has amazing service, products, technology, um, it, especially in like what has been a little bit of a trying lending environment between prices and rates. Um, having all these extra tools have allowed us to really serve people well, still be able to uh, have a, a really successful year so far. So really excited to be here and have such a great team. Yeah, and speaking from experience, because we work a lot with one another, yeah. obviously, um, we've got an amazing rapport in partnership with Ryan and her team. And I will say one thing everybody repeatedly says about Ryan and what y'all offer is just making everybody just feel like they understand the process so thoroughly. Yeah. And you go through every scenario with them so they have the best option, best terms, and you just nail it on time frame. I mean, it's crazy how quickly you've done loans for us. Whenever, unfortunately, I've handed you like Hail Mary situations like, oh, okay, we got a problem. The you fix it. <laughs> I hate to be the person that's always doing that, but you are just, again, that speaks to the reliability that we know that when we hand it to you, you take care of it. Well, thank you for that. Um, so one of my favorite things about my job and that um, has really, I think, added to my success is just because I really enjoy helping people and, you know, helping people with the biggest financial decision for most people that they'll ever make. And especially one that's so personal because your home is where you raise your family and you have your friends. Um, so to be a part of that, I understand how important that is for people. Mm -hmm. I understand how emotional it is for people. And so the empathy that I have for my clients and not only for the clients, but my referral partners who are, you know, kind enough to support me and, you know, send their clients, send their friends, my past clients. Um, that's really important to me. It means a lot to me. And so, yeah, in turn, I, uh, I work really hard to make sure that I'm providing everybody the best service and I just have the best team, um, to help me accommodate, you know, those clients. So absolutely. Well, and with Northwest Arkansas growing as much as it is, we just had like the index come out from the Realtors, you know, association mm -hmm. stating that Arkansas and the entire nation was the highest population growth index yeah. in April of 2022. And I will say being a realtor here, it's pretty exciting. It's so big. I mean, mm -hmm. we were the only state that was categorized in the highest level of population growth mm -hmm. and seeing that in the state of Arkansas, because I get the reports from the economic, you know, standpoints of where Arkansas is and all kinds of sectors, but the only place in Arkansas that's growing in population is our area. I mean, we just have so uh, much to offer. Yeah. Um, you know, in addition to um, just jobs, you know, I mean, yes. Walmart, J.B. Hunt, you know, we've got Tyson. Tyson we've got all new tech companies. All new coming tech in. companies. Yeah. Um, and then just all the, you know, vendors and, and different, you know, companies that are working, you know, with those companies each day. Um, mm -hmm. So just on top of just the job availability, we still have... A, a relatively low cost of living compared to the median income here. And I think that Absolutely. that makes it a lot more affordable to live in Northwest Arkansas. Um, the, you know, you get all the seasons, um, the uh, tr amazing trails, the biking has been a big thing that Huge has, has driven people here mm -hmm. for sure. I mean, Arkansas is just such a beautiful state and, um, and it's even with all this growth, um, you know, and the population growing, we still just have such an amazing like community and hometown Kind of vibe and I was like hey talk about it I'm like quit coming here all you people no I'm just kidding but yes it's like we we have seen such a huge amount of growth and that definitely has affected our housing inventory it for has. sure you know and I mean I love that the keynotes that you just pointed out because that's all I can you know constantly keep repeating is like this sense of community mm -hmm. and this small town kind of vibe that you get but with this incredible growth and projection of where this you know area is growing yeah. to 
I think once people get here, they're like, they're shocked. Yeah. They're like, oh, snap. Okay. I can do this. Yeah. Like, and that, you know, to the point of being able to offer so many outdoor nature, you know, like activities, I think with COVID and what everybody kind of went through, we, they realize they're like, yeah, reset, reset and yeah. kind of like, wow, ground yourself more Get back to nature. It's fun yeah. to be outside. It's, it's, it's great to be mm-hmm. in, out and enjoying like this beautiful, the beautiful nature that we, you know, yes. that we have in this beautiful area. One of the things I've always said is my favorite thing about Northwest Arkansas is that, um, you know, we have a lot of like great food and entertainment and music and culture and amenities and shopping is, you know, that's all getting better and better, but you can still drive like 45 minutes in any direction and be in the middle of nowhere if you want to. So, yeah, you know, yeah, it's really nice. You can go and find a County road and just, yeah. you know, drive down a dirt road for a little bit and you're like, it's okay. And you yep, love stuff it. behind a tractor sometimes, yeah. but you know, it's all good. But <laughs> again, you can drive to go do those things. Yeah. And I think that's also like, you know, we have a huge motorcycle community that mm-hmm. come through with, you know, um, their bikes, blues and barbecue yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But you see a lot of them because, Again, our oh, roads God. and the, I know the fly is driving me nuts too. Um, <laughs> welcome to Arkansas. Uh, Here we are. There's also that. There's flies. There are a little bit of bugs. <laughs> uh, um, but they, you know, the roads and just the scenery I know. is just, it really is picturesque. It really is. And um, so we're really grateful to have that. But I want to go back to a little bit of the relocation yeah. sector because we, again, with the growth that we're seeing in our area, we have people moving here from all over the place. And I get a lot of people that are curious about like, I don't have a job locked down and I want to find a house. Well, what is the logistics that you're looking at and how can you support people that are looking to move here? Maybe don't have a job yeah. already started because it's hard to start a job when you don't live somewhere. Right. Absolutely. So one of the things that we're able to do, um, you know, there's several different lending programs, um, but including some of the government programs, which is what, as long as you have a fully executed offer letter, um, we're able to verify that you know there's no um, unmet contingencies to your employment, that the employment's going to start within 60 days of the day that you actually go to closing. Um, certain programs do require a little bit of a, of a reserve assets to cover any sort of like gap that you have there. But we just verify the salary and we can qualify you on that, that future employment. And that's really beneficial um, to like I've had several teachers, especially this time of year, because they're coming yeah. in on these new contracts. Um, and then in healthcare, uh, nurses, um, respiratory therapists, um, you know, we've got a lot, um, a lot of growth and hiring in with the children's hospital, um, medical doctors. We have a really great medical doctor program too. Where we're able to offer 100% financing, you know, um, and one of the benefits there um, with that is that, you know, a lot of doctors who've been in school for a long time, you know, they, they've been in school, they may not have a lot of money saved up, but they've got, they're starting a great job and they're going to be you know, having that income coming in quickly. And so I'm going to be able to support them with uh, putting them into a home without having to mm-hmm. strap them for cash. And we can offer that 100% financing up to a million. Oh, so that's it's a pretty so great program. Great. Yeah. yeah. And that can still get you a lot here, yeah. you know, and that's, again, goes back to the cost of living. Mm-hmm. Your money just stretches so much further here in yeah. Arkansas and property taxes and all that kind of stuff. Cause that all, you know, essentially goes towards what your, yeah. you know, qualification, you know, numbers and yeah. verification would look like. So when you've got low property income mm-hmm. taxes and all that stuff, or low property taxes, then you're offsetting with a yeah. lot more home with a lot less price. Yeah. Well, and in addition to, you know, the medical doctors, um, you know, I guess I mentioned teachers earlier, nurses, um, there are also programs um, like a rural development loan. We have lots of areas in this, um, you know, like Centerton, Bella Vista, um, outskirts of town. There's a lot of eligibility for 100% financing. And those programs have also opened up to allow for someone to come and close and obtain financing on an offer letter as well, which would oh, be huge. Yeah, a few years back, like FHA loans mm-hmm. um, and USDA loans. They didn't really offer that. So uh, that's also a, a benefit for people who are in, you know, maybe that, moderate price point um, to be able mm-hmm. to utilize the benefits of moving with future income. Yeah. And I think a lot of people kind of assume a, you know, a rural development USDA loan is just in the middle of nowhere. And our past home in Lowell, which was in a gorgeous subdivision, um, we loved our community. We miss it yeah. a lot and our neighbors, but 
it's right in the middle of town. And that was, was that the other day. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you were. Um, yeah, but with the RD loan qualifications are in our neighborhood mm -hmm. and people wouldn't think right there in the middle of town, five minutes from the interstate, mm -hmm. you could get 100% financing. And the USDA actually did just increase their lending, um, their total household income requirements. Oh, again that's now. Big. So, yeah. yeah. So for a family um, of four, mm -hmm. it's a little over a hundred thousand qualifying income. And then it tears from there. If you're a family five or more, they give you a little extra bump. Some other things that can help you qualify for a USDA loan. Um, even if you maybe you're a little over that income limit, um, if you have childcare expense that you can, you know, document and prove, we can actually take that. We don't have to count it against your debt service ratio, but we can actually count that against your capped income and reduce oh, that wow. capped stay care. Oh I know with gosh. about, I've, I've heard a lot, you know, from, from my girls who have little, you know, little babies, like that the mm -hmm. voucher programs are about to end. And so that $20 daycare, you know, per week that a lot of people have been betting from, it's going to be like 200, you know, 200 a week probably. Mm -hmm. So, so that's a lot, you know, that's a big expense. So it's a huge, you can expense. use that amount to basically That'll make sure it, it does. It does help a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I would also like to kind of circle back around to the doctor situation because yeah. we actually have amazing healthcare here in Northwest Arkansas. Wonderful. We're so, so blessed to have everybody from Northwest, Mercy, Children's Hospital, who is planning to expand. Ronald McDonald House is within that as well with, um, you know, down in Washington County and all of that. And you offer a um, program that you said was 100% financing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And is there any, um, I guess, what is the qualification aspect look for that? Standard debt service, um, you know, typically we'd like to see the total debt to income ratio, housing and other debts be, stay under like 41%. Um, one of the benefits of that program is that a lot of the times you have, um, you know, a lot of student loans that are, coming out and maybe they're not kicking in within the first 12 months. So there's mm -hmm. um, some provisions to allow us to exclude those student loan payments um, from, from that debt ratio. Um, typically they want to see, um, you know, a credit score of, of at least like 700, 720. Oh, that's, I mean, even better one I, than I was assuming yeah. it would be because I know the student loan thing is a big deal for doctors and yeah. any medical professional. And there's no uh, private mortgage insurance with this program either. So nice. that's a cost save. Oh, that's huge. Even without having to put 20% down. Correct. Um, hello. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. And how long is that like program? I know typically they, you, you may not be able to say, but it's just something that's offered right now. Or is that mm -hmm. something that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a product that's been in place um, with the company and uh, you know, anything can change, I guess, on day to day, but yeah. don't really see um, any sort of like pullback on the product at this point in time. Yeah. Okay. So I know interest rates are a huge conversation mm -hmm. and I know you're probably like sick of talking about it. <laughs> yeah. um, I know we get asked all the time but I'd love to hear from your aspect because you know obviously we can only see what we can see mm -hmm. from our sources online yeah. and what supposedly will happen mm -hmm. and we don't have a crystal ball trust me I've, I've bought a couple and they're obviously broken or defective <laughs> um, but they don't work and they don't tell me what's happening yeah. in the future but what do you see on your side and what do you I guess are advising to your clients yeah, yeah so um a lot of people I see um a lot of people talking you know on social media and stuff about trying to understand the methodology for the for the increasing rates and I mean essentially um it's it's a tool meant to combat inflation um you know the 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 simplest terms I guess would be it's the idea of uh, making the cost of borrowing higher is going to stave off spending because then if people can't get credit at the same at a lower rate, then they're going to save. Mm -hmm. And so when they start saving for items, the demand goes down. And in theory, when demand goes down, inventory goes yeah, up. exactly. Mm -hmm. in, inventory goes up, supply prices level off, pricing comes down. Um, we are just now starting to see. I think that that have a little bit more of an impact in housing. Um, you know, the problem is, is we do just have such a really strong housing market. And, um, you know, with the inflation, the main areas where you're seeing the biggest inflation, gas prices, groceries, and housing, unfortunately, those are not areas that a home can like usually forego spending on, right? Mm -hmm. You got to eat, you got to have a place to live, and you got to be able to drive to work. So it's been a slower I think process of leveling um, and correcting, but mm -hmm. we are starting to see some of that and, and you are 
buyers are definitely considering now um, the combination of the higher prices and the interest rates. But I've been doing this for 15 years. Um, I follow some some really great um, mortgage forecasters and all the top forecasters that I follow. One of them, Barry Habib. Um, people have probably heard of him. You know, everyone's forecasting that probably about Q2 next year, we're going to see these interest rates come back down. And that probably land somewhere in the three and a half, four percent range. So a lot of people points, buying points to lower interest rate. That's been a, a topic and a question that's come up a lot more. And um, while when rates are higher, those points do have a little bit more impact mm -hmm. on how, you know, how much the rate moves. Yeah. Um, but if we're talking quarter two of next year, that's basically about this time next year. And if you're in your home for 12 months and you're paying maybe six, six and a half percent today, so you have the opportunity in 12 months to lower that. Um, you know, I kind of explain to people whether or not it's beneficial to pay points if they mm -hmm. see themselves refinancing because, you know, the idea behind paying points is that you're paying basically some of your interest up front, right. essentially to lower your cost over the life of the loan. But there's a there's a point of recapture. So if you pay a point, let's say it's two thousand dollars on a two hundred thousand dollar loan, and it lowers your rate three eighths or two a half, or so. your savings, let's say fifty to seventy five dollars. Well, you'll break even on that probably in about twelve to fourteen months, give or take. But um, but if you're going to refinance in twelve to fourteen months, then it may not be beneficial because mm -hmm. you haven't actually started saving until after you've recaptured that. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely um, counsel all my borrowers on that. Um, you know, obviously, again, crystal ball, you know, we don't have any way to know for sure what's going to happen. But I've been doing this for 15 years. I've been following a lot of the same um, economic forecasters, and they tend to be pretty accurate. And I feel pretty confident that, you know, I just kind of provide everybody with all, all those tools and information to allow them to make the best decision for them. Yeah. But and I'm all about not letting people spend money that they shouldn't. They don't need to. They don't have to. I think the one question I'd like to kind of wrap up with, because this is the question that we're getting in trying to advise our clients on a refi mm -hmm. scenario come a year from now, well, what if prices on our house is not going to support what we purchased to that? Yeah. So um, you really see that happening um, again. A lot of what's driven up the prices here, the demand have been cash buyers, people paying over. And even though you are starting to see a little bit of a leveling in, in you know, combination with the, uh, the higher price and the higher interest rates, we still have a huge, huge demand. We still mm -hmm. don't have enough inventory. So we may not see what we've seen over the last couple of years where those prices are increasing 10, 15, 20% in those values year over year. But the likelihood that those values are going to decline, that would really require a tremendous surge of inventory like REO assets, bank-owned properties, and foreclosures. And, and I think one of the things that was done um, that, that has protect us from like what you saw in the initial housing recession mm -hmm. was that the integrity of loans being done are, are much higher. There are a lot of affordable products out there, you know, and like government loans that definitely allow flexibility with credit, but they vet those out in a lot of lower debt to income ratios, higher down payments. That and added to the fact that people have a lot of equity in their homes right now too. Mm -hmm. So if somebody was in a financial you know, situation, that's great, likelihood that they'd allow their home to go into foreclosure rather than to sell it um, is not them. probable. Yeah. So we're not seeing, even when they lifted the moratorium on, you know, basically uh, stopping foreclosures, you're not seeing those numbers be high. They're actually about in line with previous years so far. Yeah. Even after COVID, all the stimulus and things like that, the higher prices, all those things have really helped combat um, any sort of big wave of like foreclosures. And I think that's going to continue to prevail. Yeah. And I think also, again, we're, you're going to hear on this podcast and through our videos continuously hearing that Northwest Arkansas is a bubble and we, I am on platforms and have communication with people all across, honestly, the world, but specifically in North America. And some of them are already talking about them being in a recession in their states where, you know, with the housing markets and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And I just don't think Northwest Arkansas will ever go through that. I mean, but even nationally, a lot of people, you know, I think I've, I've, I've seen people talking about that in other areas, but again... Arkansas, those rates are really low, but even nationally, those numbers have not shown any sort oh. of significant gains. They mm -hmm. just haven't. You know, there's just been, there were a lot of things in place to make sure that people could stay in their homes while, you know, while things were shut down and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and COVID was a big factor there. 
I've actually been able to see um, in the last couple of weeks um, government buyers coming back in and, and yeah. able to and able to get an opportunity to compete on a home. Mm -hmm. I've even seen I had a couple of contracts where the sellers were agreeable to paying closing costs on behalf of, of a government buyer, which is huge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it was really hard because you would have a government, you know, low to moderate income person who's even saved up maybe enough for a down payment or even the down payment and closing costs, but they couldn't afford to do that plus pay over appraisal and exactly. it just got really discouraging. Yeah. Um, and so I think that those people. Um, you know, if you've been in the last two years wanting to buy a home and, and really struggled, like it may be time to revisit. The interest rates are still a little bit higher now, but again, there's refinance opportunities. Um, mm -hmm. The other side of it is that renting is, is you know, price of rents have gone up too. So yeah, it's, it's, to it's not going to be mm -hmm. less expensive to buy a home than it is to rent. It's just now, I think the opportunity for, for some of those moderate, you know, middle income homes to be able to buy they have, they're going to have some options again. Getting with you and getting with a realtor that can, you know, we just did one off market deal, you know, FHA yes. situation worked out beautifully. And so when you can partner with someone like Diamond Property Group, someone like Ryan with Flat Branch Mortgage, you're I told, sitting in a great situation. I told you this um, last year, and uh, but I want to say it again, is that um, you work so hard for people. So the, the reason I think we work so well together is, that, you know, for my friendship is she's got a heart for people too. And, um, she was working really hard last year to get people into homes that were in these lower price points when no one else could. She was out here finding off market properties. She was working really hard for these people. And, um, and she's got a great team who all do the same thing. So that's really valuable. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like you, I love helping people. Yeah. And when you get to the end of the day and you know that you it's win above like, and beyond. It's such a great feeling. Yeah. It's, I mean, to serve others. I know. It's like so we get wonderful. To, we get to make a living at this. I know. Yeah. Every day. Mm -hmm. We love the roller coasters too. We do. We're down for the, the ride. Emotional highs and lows. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. I love you. I love you too. Thank you so much. Yeah. And be sure to check out Ryan Thornton and her team. She's going to be uh, in our links below and in the comments. We'd love to hear any questions that you guys have. And be sure to come back to our channel so you can hear more and uh, with future guests. Yeah. And I'm sure you'll see Ryan again. I'll be around. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you.